we'll see. So today is going to be a bit challenge, a challenging composition here we have. I really wanted to include this carriage card in front of this house because I thought it matches so well <laughs> with the, the original photo that I wanted to send you with just the house. So uh, it may look a bit complicated, but it shouldn't be. And again, this time we're just going to do what's important, always focus on what's important. At the same time, have this super interesting element. So what we're going to do is combine this card with the house. So I'm turning my paper horizontal because I want to have enough space here for this um, card here. So let's start sketching it quickly. So I'm going to put the house here on the right, on the right area, just kind of roughly indicating how much space it's going to take. I like this chimney, so I want to leave enough space for it. So it you can just crop part of it, no worries, but just make sure that it's somewhere there. So very, very roughly, hopefully you can see. My lines are too light, but hopefully you can see. So very rough. Here we have our rooftop. It looks, it's such a cute house. It's somewhere in Europe, Western Europe. I think it's the Netherlands, maybe. It looks like a fairy tale, one of those fairy tale houses. It's too cute. So it, I really wanted something interesting that can get your attention. So make sure it's larger. It takes a lot of space here. Um, we have a little ladder on the, on the left, a bunch of elements. So quickly sketching it, not too many details, very, very rough again. Just basically looking at how much space it's going to take. And in this case, my, my laptop is falling asleep too quickly. So that's, that's all you, you pretty much need. Hopefully you guys can see it. That's all you need for the house. I don't go into too many details just placement of things there is another chimney here on the back so i'm just gonna very quickly put it here there is a path you see part of it and there is a horizon line of course so let's just and i know whatever you see there on the card it's people are trying to really um sometimes combine literally the photos we're just using the actual card so don't worry what's behind it we may add it actually yeah there's a whole bunch of things going on like little houses behind it but generally i really wanted to include this card right here so here we go so pay attention to the perspective and i know we have a horizon line which is the vantage point here i mean not the vantage with the horizon this is where your eye level is so pay attention to that if it's above that horizon line you won't be able to see what's inside this so a little bit kind of looks kind of big so in a way it it can be way in front of the house that's why it's big so make sure things are parallel like all your lines are correctly placed they're all straight so this is going to be your foreground then the eye is going to lead to the house and then we have some other stuff going behind let me see this is probably not where it should be i'm just slightly Okay, just adding stuff and again we're gonna paint loose so don't worry too much about extra details obviously so pay attention this wheel in the front is smaller and it's more obviously it's turned so you don't see it quite uh, the one in the very front is um, turned towards us more not completely but way more than the one in the front so just pay attention to these things again make sure elements are placed in the right spot right here in the center you have these guys here going in every direction and here it's more of an oval so you don't 
quite see see it facing us okay very very quickly sketching now uh, to just balance it out let me quickly see what I'm seeing. Okay. Oh, okay. So there is an opening here. I'm sorry. I'm like, my picture is in my, on my computer here on my laptop. So I can't quite see very well there. Okay. So here is some stuff. This, there is an opening and you can see the inside of this. And here is that center of that other wheel going this way so these are important elements make sure you sketch them correctly and we'll leave some space and we'll have a background and the background is gonna have a few houses probably just as a silhouette there to balance it out and you can make things up there. They don't have to be literally what you see there. So, maybe even higher. Let's lift it a bit. So it's not so even. We, I don't like to have the background really like a straight, straight line in this case. So it may go from... from above here going down and very very rough like as you can see all the whole sketch is pretty rough painted quickly um, all right so these guys a few lines and I am ready to start painting but I will wait if you guys still drawing it and sketching it I know some things are a bit complex but that was our challenge for today trying to combine both and we will have a lot of fun painting this so there is a um, definitely dimension here to these wheels that I'd like you to pay attention to so you see the inside of that width and then that turns the other way and for those of you who need more time drawing feel free to sketch your drawing ahead of time before class like the day before the, the same day whenever just if you need more time because i'm a lot of the time i'm kind of rushing through all this initial stage because i think we can really have it all very very roughly sketched it doesn't have to be super literal but if you do need more time feel free to sketch it ahead of time all right, so as long as you see the dimensions, so there's one plane, everything is planes. We are looking at it and there are certain planes going in certain directions. So there's this plane, that plane, just start looking at the world around you as different directions. Some are going towards you, some are going away from you. And again, there is perspective that we pay attention to. And other things so all the the rest of the drawing can be done by painting basically this is not the best yeah my, my needed eraser became so hard it's even hard to, <laughs> to erase i don't know what happened to it sometimes if they're too old they, they just really get hard you know? super soft hopefully i don't destroy my paper too much so just getting rid of all these too many lines here and hopefully you guys can see what's happening and while you're still drawing just give me a shout when you're ready and we're gonna start painting soon as soon as you're ready and I'm just adding probably more detail here so there's one side again another plane to this chimney I just keep adding things I normally would just start painting right away but if you're still drawing i'll keep adding all these details so maybe there is a little window here and again the reason why you're we are not too crazy about too many details at this stage is because we don't want to feel too confined and have some more loose type of painting 
rather than ultra realistic and fall into the fill in like we're just filling in spots and areas so we're going to see the big picture definitely darker values on the house darker values on that card that's going to be the darkest and of course there is a very nice cool cast shadow here we that we see i can even uh, sketch that quickly but always squint your eyes eyes to eye, and paint these big areas first and don't worry about too many details so i know there is more shadow here we can always add all these little pots the flowers we can improvise again be will be very very loose with that but all i see is some nice elements so it's a combination of organic and all these florals and the actual house that that rooftop has an interesting shape so just a kind of sketchy a little suggestion of what it should be i know there are a bunch of windows there's one here and there's a little window over here at the bottom and that's all you need really. there is this chimney and i love the antenna they have this little antenna is it an antenna or is it the wind that that what is it called the wind something okay there is another chimney from behind right so little villages are so much fun to paint really okay so perspective wise if we're looking at this chimney from below obviously this side of it here is parallel to the side of the house but see the bottom of the house is going up because it's going towards a vantage point somewhere on that horizon and the side of the chimney is going down also going towards that point somewhere where they will meet this is just a little lesson on perspective and that goes with this side this side of the chimney is parallel to this side of the house so this line is going this way this line is going that way and that horizon line is where everything is going to meet somewhere okay So let me know if you guys are ready to paint. Let's put all my brushes over here. And there's a lot of nice details that we will start paying attention to as soon as we after we finish with the big shapes. So we're gonna start blocking things. I like the sky that is in the house, like behind the house. We don't have to be too literal again. You can improvise, but I like that sky. So we'll just keep it in this brown, brownish, grayish tones with some greens undertones. And we can warm it up a bit with some orange and warmer tones, like oranges, reds, some yellows, but we'll keep it warm. The whole palette will be in the warm tones. I'm just erasing some of these lines because they do show sometimes are a bit too too jarring for the eyes so 
although not all so it's nice to have some lines showing through your painting actually i like that uh but not too much like we don't want to be too overwhelming so i'm just getting rid of some of them So you see the inside of that wheel, that's important to know. There are two sides, so one that's facing us and one is the side of that. So. we're doing we 20 minutes sketching drawing <laughs> I think we, we're ready to start thumbs up anyone not yet even if you have just the basic it's still good it's okay you can start painting you don't have to have every single detail there just indicate okay this is where my card is gonna be this is wheels, two wheels. Don't worry about the, what are these called? These little spokes. Specs, thank you. Spokes. 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 Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> spokes. Yes, so don't worry too much about them. Yeah, there will be, we'll, we'll create these during the painting time. That's that's an interesting chimney. It's kind of I made it too fat. Okay, it needs to be a little bit skinnier, so I can always fix it. And it goes down. It actually continues. I see what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. So it goes in front. Okay, so underneath this is going to continue underneath. All right, so I just added a little bit more detail. So this chimney basically goes all through. It's kind of outside of the house, so it's built almost like an addition. But don't worry, if you don't, if you don't get all these detail, you, you'll be absolutely fine. I'm just waiting for you guys, so I'll keep adding and adding and adding. Alright, so we're going to be nice and bold and using our nice dark values to just really block this quickly. And we'll start from the sky, wet on wet, we're going to go down. We will do the background first and go forward from there.
pause while we are drawing. All right, so here we go. So lots of water, big, big brush, lots of water. We're going everywhere across. We're not skipping any areas, so we're going across. All right, and we're going to mix a nice color here. We're going to make a puddle for the sky. So I like this ultramarine blue. Let's get some indigo. Let's get some indigo. We, we're adding it in the power in the puddle. Let's get some brown, whatever you have, burnt sienna or anything. And it's going to make a nice grayish blue. And we're going to go across this. I know the sky looks kind of ominous now. So let's gradate it with some orange going down. Let's add a bit of orange. That is a different sky isn't it so let's add some more tones all right and now you can start adding with a different brush you can start popping a bunch of clouds make it darker than what you have so i'm just adding here this bottle ultramarine some indigo i'm dabbing in here in this crimson lake that I mentioned it's a bit reddish and I'm just tapping on this wet on wet adding some darker clouds so just dab dab a few clouds kind of going in a bit of a diagonal direction everything is a it's covering don't worry about the houses houses underneath and of course they're getting a little smaller as we go backwards i mean as we go be far away so getting again a little mix adding a few more clouds we don't want to overdo it too much we don't want it to be symmetrical left to right but i like this a bit of a diagonal kind of adds some more drama to it and we're getting smaller and smaller as we go back now be be careful not to create parallel lines like it, it has to be kind of sporadic everywhere and now hopefully everything is all still very very wet while it's all wet i'm gonna get my paper towel and we're going to tap where the light is which is going to be above like you, it's a see-through certain light I'm trying to pop in here and there. So I'm just tapping it. And again, lift, lift your paper. You can have stuff maybe drop down a bit. And here you can just tap in some lights. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like your reference. I always say that. It has to look good on your painting. Okay, so I'm just tapping here and there. Again, avoid symmetry, avoid sameness everywhere. And I know when you tap, kind of the paint goes back. So you can just tap it again a little bit, go back. And this way, how we want to create some really neat sky. You can again, very gently, very gently, you can have a bit of a swipe, swipe, maybe there's more light over here. Somewhere there should be a, maybe, sun setting. Looks like the end of the day so i'm putting maybe a warmer yellow a little bit it's got that's still my house so maybe a little here but try not to add too much on this wet on wet because it may actually create weird shapes on that sky which we don't want so i'm just tapping a bit again adding some some of that sky and clouds popping through Looks like a rainy day.
why not have some fun with this whole thing create maybe a texture a bit of a texture all right so now we're going to start moving down all right let's uh Pop, just block that background there that's right behind our main element so I'm gonna take this um, we're gonna use cool tones because it's the background and we want it to recede and go back so I'm getting this crimson lake using the same color that they mix for the sky but just use less water now and I'm gonna mix something like a bluish bluish oh didn't What's I say alternative to uh, it's probably probably like a quinacridon magenta any type of magenta um okay. let me see again. quinacridon red that, these are nice cool reds basically any cool red that is going into the pinks so when it starts going into the pinks and the burgundies, it's, it gets cooler. So anything like that, I like to mix it with my blues to get this purple tones. And I will start popping in here, this background with this tone. So as you can see, it's not completely dark. I know my camera is showing it as very dark, but it's actually, in, in fact, it's not too dark. And I'm just going to block this. Big shapes, again, remember, only seeing the big shapes. Don't worry too much about the, the details. I know there are a whole bunch of details. So I'm just tapping, silhouetted, almost silhouettes. You can always go back, add some, move your brush in every direction. You can have some of the white showing. Maybe there's some white coming through. Put water down first. Um, I think I still have some water here from the from the sky. I still have some of that water, but if you don't have water, uh, just you can add some water, but don't don't make it too watery. Yeah, mine is starting to to actually blend into the background completely, but you can use less water really for this background, and you can get some indigo. Let's get some indigo because it, it starts to look a little bit too purple. So I don't want it to be ultra purple. I'm just adding some darks. And you can always add some details later. But here, um, I'm adding the orange to this whole mix. So it starts to look brown, brownish. But it's a cool brown. I don't know how to describe it. But just anything that's a little dark. Move your brush in any direction. Don't worry too much about following what's over there. Know that these are all houses or little rooftops. If things bled, like, okay, question. Was that a question? I'm listening. Okay, so if things bled a little bit too much into the sky, just leave it alone. Don't worry too much. We just keep going and adding these houses in the back. Tap in some, so blues, blue and orange is gonna create a, a brown, cool brown, like really cool. So I'm, I'm making this whole silhouette up. Don't worry about matching it with your, with that other reference there that we have. I'm just adding maybe some chimney. See with the horizontal, moving the brush horizontally, you just add all these elements. And you can lift some stuff. And now we have a nice silhouette there. See, less detail, just very minimal, very minimal detail. And it's gradating to lighter tones, that same color. So now we're going to have fun with our main elements and let this whole background be. Don't worry too much about it. I know my sky somehow is drying with these weird shapes. I'm still kind of tapping, tapping to soften them a little bit to look more like 
clouds. Just a little bit. To just soften some of these edges because some, somehow this tapping creates these harsher edges. I don't know why. Instead of being softer. So. Because, yeah, it's basically the pigment dries a different different way. So you can always lighten that up a bit if you need to. All right. So now we're going to have a lot of fun with... We're going to do this, start painting the house. Big shapes again. Squint, and all I see is a very, very dark rooftop and that chimney. And I'm just going to use one tone for this. I'm getting some uh, indigo here. I'm making a puddle. I'm getting my brown, and I'll mix both. So it's a burnt sienna, I think, with some indigo. Burnt sienna, indigo, and let's warm it up a bit. Didn't I say we? I wanted this to be warmer, but now it's looking cooler. <laughs> so things do change sometimes. So I'm just going to grab some orange to warm it up. And now it, I have this nice brown. And everywhere, I'm just going to pop it everywhere. I didn't put any well, water. This is kind of a dry brush. So you don't need to put too much water here because we're going to start building this house. Don't worry if your brush goes outside of those little lines that you put in. Leave some light, some paper popping through. Uh, don't just fill in completely. Make sure your brush moves in any direction. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So more pigment, definitely more pigment than this whole background. A little bit thicker and darker. This is pretty much the darkest value, really. But right now we're just still blocking it. We're not going into the detail. We're just blocking it with this dark tone. Big blocks, dry brush, or water. Lots of water, and I'm gonna block now. Immediately move down to the to this side of the house. So let's use some warmer tones. I have a this tone is called it's called that's not it. That's something else. Okay, which one did you use? I used something. All right, it is burn. This is the burn CN, I think. I'll have to find it. I'll have to find it and I'll let you know exactly what I use. But it's a warmer brown, like orangey brown. And I'm going to start pushing it down here. Everything connects now. Big blocks, big blotches, big blocks of color. Now you can actually, let's wet this front a bit, a little bit. And let's wet our bottom. So everything starts connecting. So we're going to have big shapes painting everywhere. We are wetting this. I'm even going over the card too. Okay, so we're gonna create big, big blobs of town. And then we'll start pulling out the detail from this. So a little bit warmer on this on the front, kind of a yellowish. Hopefully you see that puddle. So I'm mixing cadmium yellow with that brownish tone that I have. So it's not completely very bright yellow, but I'm toning it down, but it's still, oops, sorry for the camera move. It's still very warm. 
It's a very, very warm tone. I'm just blocking it. Let's block this. A little touch of uh, orange even on that chimney. Nice and warm. And you can lift, lift the whole paper and kind of let it, let things drip a bit. To create some interesting effects. See how it drips. Let's pop this chimney here. Very dark on one side. Maybe a little bit warmer. Redder, red orange on the front right away. So I'm just popping it in here. Not too much water here. So it's more red. Don't worry again about being super precise with your details. We will add the details later. I'm just tapping it here to indicate the placement and just dry brush this. Okay, there's another chimney over here with that same tone. Okay, and immediately I'm gonna move down, so warmer red warmer red red orange going down here on that chimney and I know this one side of the chimney is darker so let's pop in some of this darker tone this indigo going here and the bottom of the house here and now immediately I'm moving down to the ground so let's not use greens uh, now that we use a lot of blue, maybe instead of green I have this, I think it's a turquoise, so let's use that, turquoise with brown, and it's going to make a very interesting gray, and we're just going to pop this over here at the bottom and create the road. The road can have some texture, so tap tap with your paper, with your towel, paper towel, a little bit. All right, so this warmer tone that we mix for the house can continue for the background, for the roof, like continuing basically the whole tone. And you can take one big swipe with a warmer tone all across this. Um, card that we have. Leave some white on top. That's probably going to be our light. Like little highlights there. Tone. What, what color is this? Okay, I have to find it because it's a really cool. It's not the yellow ochre. Okra. Maybe that's what it is. No, it's not. It's definitely not the okra. It is. Okay, I found it. Okay, so it's it is burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Okay, so here you can, you know, have a bit dry brush technique here, strokes at the ground, on the ground, going in this direction to warm it up. So nice and warm, and now we're going to start adding some darks, some darker areas for that card. And we will use the burnt umber or whatever brown you guys have. Yeah, sometimes different different brands 
the colors don't look quite the same as their name in depending on the brand so, so just a darker brown we're gonna and maybe some of the red crimson that I have here I'm just warming it up and we're gonna paint this card just adding again we're not going into detail yet just adding the big blocks we're still blocking it I know this is going to be this is going to be dark this is the dark you can block also now the shadow I'll add some of the blue add this blue here where the shadow is and just squint your eye big shapes big shapes big brush strokes squint your eyes and that same tone that you use for the background buildings a little bit more pigment and a little warmer we're going to use it for this drop shadow that's being cast now probably will, your paper is still very wet so don't go into too, too much detail with the shadow just pop a big blob and we're going to go into detail later with with the shadow of the wheels which is kind of interesting so you may want to just lift i'm just lifting here a few spots okay and we'll, we'll go into the details all right so there's more dark I know there's dark this whole area should be dark I'm just darkening it even more and then you can lift the spikes Mine are not quite lifting. Everything is too wet, so <laughs> so we'll lift them later, a little later. Just adding some detail here on that part and maybe a cooler I just want to add some cool area here on that background that's behind maybe have a negative shape around this card a little bit to pop it more So now we can get into a little bit more detail and the detail will be by added by adding our dark dark tones. I know there is the bush with the flowers and everything. You can kind of spatter this with water. This whole area it, it may appear see the dots how they show up if the paper is still wet. That could create a nice little texture sort of suggesting these flowers we can tap it in some other areas but yeah those little blooms that appear yeah, we can use those later for, for the flower area so now and that was it so now we're going to add very very dark tones and i'm going to get my indigo i'm getting this crimson red because i really want to have a nice warm dark so not too much water now we're gonna use nice and thick paint less water and we're gonna start now adding all these little darks with our dry brush popping it in all kinds of directions starting to have things showing i know that 
it's a little dry brush you don't when you draw a line like all these structural lines make sure that nothing is completely the same from top to bottom you can soften some edges that's gonna give a sense of atmosphere you start to stop basically so the line is start stop and of course there's and I use two brushes right now so one is painting the other one is lifting so I'm just lifting with the other one here is that part right in the front A little detail All these interesting ones. The other, my brush is lifting. Here's some dry brush. Definitely there is a shadow underneath that's been cast underneath that rooftop. Crimson, indigo, a bit of a puddle. Let's add these cool lines here don't worry too much about again being super precise I can't see it see my picture because it's really small on my laptop so I'm just seeing what I'm seeing and that's what I'm painting may not be exactly what it is it may not be architecturally correct but it's believable because I'm kind of seeing the big picture and that's what I'm painting as long as it's believable and gives the feel for what you're painting that's what we are after. So there is a little window here, I know. Dry brush it, very bold brush strokes, like sketching it almost, like a sketch and a little more. And don't overdo it again, less is more. I'm just adding a bit more dark here. There's a lot of stuff happening, but don't worry too much because we are concerned about still about the big picture. A little cooler tones here, maybe for the greenery. And now you can just indicate a little bit of that, like tap, 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 tap. With the tapping brush strokes, you, you show these leaves or the brush and again if you squint your eyes you don't see much just a suggestion of a texture of some greenery going on so you can warm it up a bit so I'm just gonna tap it just create little little texture move your brush in every direction it should none of these taps should be looking all the same working grouping so we always work in little groupings remember so move your brush horizontally vertically i'm just tapping it everywhere i know it's, it's on every side on the side of it and if things flow away or start blending everywhere don't worry it's all good we're having a nice very loose painting okay, I'm just showing some more on the side in the background kind of blends everywhere so the see the, if you notice the nice beautiful shadow of that card so obviously that shadow we want to have the both pictures kind of combining to one so the shadow should be consistent so if this shadow is here there's going to be a shadow here under that uh, pot and probably a shadow right next to that house even though we don't see it in the reference but we want to make it all believable so okay just again dark tones we are adding more details with the darks so again, I'm getting the crimson, the indigo, that cool windows right up there. So you paint a negative shape, you pay more attention. This is this is a nice little 
to any element so I'm just adding it by painting these little rectangles negative shape some some detail okay my perspective is not right so let me fix that okay draw going in this direction kind of towards your vanishing point because it's above the horizon so they should be going down right not too much okay so I'm just adding some more dark and some more dark on that chimney the chimney needs to be dark on this side we're starting to pop in some more dark tones so it's my brush is almost dry and I'm just adding this on that loose underpainting that we have with the blocks basically so make sure your brush strokes are nice and free don't be too confined don't worry too much really you have to have fun so i'm just adding a little dry brush here to indicate that part of the roof here's more darks adding more and more okay there's some more elements okay and again be very free dry brush you can totally dry brush all of these little details you know kind of a sketchy way moving down to that cute ladder there i'm gonna mix nice orange tone it down a bit with sienna and I'll paint the negative shape let's darken it a bit the negative shape nothing's too parallel these are you know old old looking elements so things are not quite parallel it's so sort of jointed or a little rugged rustic we are the rustic look right now so we can ground it with a bit of uh, see I'm just mixing all my colors here on this palette with a, a few of these greens just a suggestion don't go too crazy with the details i know we see a billion details on that painting but we're going to be very very selective very selective with what we include because otherwise it's going to create a bit of an overwhelming painting unless you read you can you can if you decide that yes i want to have a billion details do it do it but just pick select the areas not everywhere you know just select only the house or the house and part of the card so if you if you you know after the class you can continue adding details because there's tons but you know as long as it's not every single thing so i'm just adding some more some more darks going there is another little window here it's hard to see okay we're not being exactly exactly precise we're just improvising some dry brush you can even add another window even if it's not there or not quite i feel like maybe i should have something here so i'm just adding it so 
to warm our tunes, just warm it up. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, all these cool lines. Maybe there is a window right here. We can add some with white lines later. We can just, or warmer, more opaque yellow. You can just add some on top of it, even if you didn't paint the negative shape. All right, so we're gonna move slowly. Okay, so what time is it? Whoa, we have 30 minutes, do we? Oh, oh. okay, so let's move to this card very, very quickly. Warm our town, burn. Umber, burn umber, indigo, nice and dark. So we're gonna start adding all these darks with our almost dry brush. Ta -da. And here there's a whole bunch of darks and that could be added. Now we can pay attention to this cast shadow underneath. So there is a line right here. There's a whole bunch of cool lines. So I'm just using really, really dry brush. Mm -hmm. And you can have another brush to kind of tap on some of these edges so they're not completely everywhere. Maybe add a second layer as a tone to make this look more substantial, a little heavier in value it's a bit too light in my painting so i'm just gonna add some darks right on top of this maybe there's some lines coming up just improvise have some sketchy fun lines okay we're gonna add now this dark part Look at this. Almost dry brush, thick, thick paint. Just adding a bunch of lines. Destroying some of the edges, softening basically. We're basically softening some of these edges. Adding some more lines here. Some, some of these are sticking out. Yeah, that's the difference between painting from a photo and painting from real life. Real life, you see so much. You see everything. In photo, you have to really use a magnifying glass to really kind of focus on what's going on, but it has its positives because you, and the trick is to avoid really not painting everything, but paying attention to the most important, to the, also the values, always pay attention to your values. So it's important to know that here it's going to be really dark. So that's my one value. And now here you can paint the negative shape of these uh, spikes and if you drew them if you, if you lost the drawing you can go back and kind of make sure that okay so they're all correct they're not all disjointed and just very very quickly paint that negative shape behind underneath and leave those light I know there's stuff happening behind and we're gonna kill some of these edges. I know it looks a bit too tight right now here on whatever I'm painting. I will soften these edges eventually. I'm just putting this. Then there's lines. Dry brush, dry brush. Uh, 
definitely dark, lots of dark. Some of these are really popping. And it's, since it's our foreground, it's right in front of us, they should be really popping. And here, this wheel here with a dry brush, be very bold and and precise with that. I'm going to indicate, okay, so this is going to be my shadow. You can do a dry brush with the shadow. And adding some more. I'm going to now soften some of the edges with water and lift a few so it's not also super precise. Okay, so now you see it, now you don't type of thing. Which works great because we don't have to worry too much. Okay, so here is again this wheel is nice and dark. A lot of dark behind. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, but don't worry, just something, squint your eye, whatever you see, that's what you put. Okay. And you can soften some of these edges. I'll soften the top part here on that wheel because it's the it's hit by the light. All right, so we keep adding our shadow. It's right here. Kind of dry brush it. Now that wheel, we need to add this darker side of it on the front. So be just if you can just do it with one swipe, that will be great. Soften it a bit, and you can lift some of these guys, those spikes, if you if they're not showing, and just lift some of them. See, so now you see it, now you don't. So a little red here, I see some uh, accents that we can do here on that thing. Axle, that's got to be the axle. Maybe some yellow on top to pop it. That's going to be the same on this side. I'll grab a smaller brush for the other wheel, a little bit smaller, and again, darker red and indigo, darker red indigo. And we're gonna quickly do a dry brush, tap, tap, tap. Just tap it like that. There is shadow, there is shadow. And there's lots of dark here basically but okay so that wheel that side of the wheel will be warmer and I'm gonna warm it up with this orange here that I have so, and it's still on the dark side like darker but it's a little warm and again, let's soften some of these edges because that's that wheel that's far away, so it doesn't have to be super sharp. So see how I ran water and it softened it immediately. Something lo looks odd with my perspective, so I'm just gonna fix it just a bit. That's it. Let's add some more dark. Okay, here I'm just adding some more dark on this side. Okay, now 
paying attention to the drop shadow there. Yeah, it's a bit more complex. I know we're having a little challenge today, but it's going to work just fine. Even if you don't finish it today during the class, just continue after that. While you're still fresh, have it all fresh in your mind, that will be great. And you're still feeling inspired. Very, very basic, all these shapes. Don't go too crazy about, oh, but there is a little white, oh, there is a little just the basic like that is it that's all i see i mean i know i see much more but you don't need it where you really don't so we're being very very selective so there's probably a light side here on that card on top so i'm just lifting just a tad bit here Just adding a bit of a challenge underneath. And how about we connect somehow these elements? The elements meaning the house and this card because they seem like two separated. One here, one there. I'm going to start adding this greenery. So I have this very cool green. It's almost like a, it's a turquoise. But we're going to mix it with some of the orange and it gives me this almost gray green and I'm gonna connect it like at these bushes so a little green little stuff happening and introduce it into this car because I want them to be connected so nobody knows we use two different pictures real so tap some more light lines, some more little stuff happening, more foliage, smaller and smaller, they get smaller and smaller. You can, you know, spatter with that same tone, kind of a green gray, very interesting tone, grayish green. I just spatter it, it gives me texture on the ground. I'm gonna spatter it around that little card here. And now we are looking at the overall picture. Slightly straightening this and that, just maybe adding a bit texture. I think this is brick, so it may, you may add little you know second layer of some things little detail don't go all top to bottom with bricks just a little suggestion little bit of a suggestion here and there now you can pop in some accents remember that red that we we put in here on our on the card on the side so we can have some red you know pop it here and there not too much water, things are going to start floating too much, so just almost dry brush it. There's some more accent here. We're just very subtle brush strokes, kind of strategic. Maybe introduce some more, a little darker areas here because it looks on the side of the house maybe some more dark I know that this is a pot and I just want to have some little darker shades right there to just add some more interest okay so now you can take our rigor brush add some more details obviously there is I'm sure there's probably a couple of lines coming from here. They okay, don't overdo the the foliage. I know it can take a lot of too much. It's gonna. It, you don't want it to become too too much or take away from the actual the overall look of that little house. Alright, so let's 
so the regular brush can add some more lines to the card a little bit again very quick very straight uh, you can add a whole bunch of cool things like that antenna also they have more than just the antenna so I'm taking some darker tone here with the indigo mixing it with the brown and definitely start adding these cool things just quick brisk brush strokes that makes it fun maybe something else something else is popping there is a little bit of a little chimney here this is all can be done with your in a regular brush I think there you can even do uh, the, the, those electric lines I think there is a line there let me get a very thin rigger and very boldly I'm gonna do ta -da, something like that and even two that are kind of crisscrossing that adds a lot of life to these paintings so more lines I'm going to add to the background that we have there so maybe a bunch of antennas some more things If I lost a bunch of chimneys or details, you can just add them, maybe. But don't 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 worry too much because it's the background, so we don't want that to suddenly start jumping more than everything else. I know that there is maybe a little bit of a roof or some element. And that's how we go. Time is 15 minutes. Oh, we have 15 more minutes. Okay, guys, feel free to show me what you have. Even if it's work in progress, and we can definitely comment on what needs to be done or how it's going. I pulled the plug on this one. I'm not showing it. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe you just need more time, Dini. Don't pull the plug. No. Uh, I'll go back to it, but I have to stop. Yes. Okay. I know it. It was probably a little bit too much combining, especially combining both. But uh, just keep working. Don't, don't give up on your work, guys. I know sometimes it looks pro frustrating. Okay, so I'm just keep adding with my. This you can do it again. I'm recording this. Hopefully, I can post it sooner uh, after I edit it. But definitely, definitely, you're gonna have fun. Maybe the second time, if the first time was not quite there, you it will work eventually. So I'm just adding a little bit more elements here. But whoever is brave enough, please do show. Okay, not too much in the background, just a little bit to connect. I wanted to connect both. So that green kind of feels alone just in the house. And I always say if you have it somewhere, always in some place, have it in more than one place. So I'm just going to keep adding a little bit, just as just kind of reddish greenish blobs. Maybe you can just have a little greenish blob here. So it's not by itself, if you know what I mean. Just to make it all unified, reunify it again. It's a very gray green it's not green green it's a very dull dull green 
which is not interfering with the overall palette of purples and blues. So just a couple of dots here and there, maybe a couple of spatter in green, and that will do. So the overall feel should be loose, really. Just adding a couple more lines. Make sure your lines are not too timid or too, I don't know how to explain to describe it more of a, make sure they're bold even if they're not quite on the right spot just adding adding the darks and making sure your uh, <clears throat> values are correct so if you're if you're at a place like if like Dini feels that oh she's pulling the plug. Uh, if you're at that spot, don't don't give up on it because what you can do is check the values. If your values are correct, this is this is gonna be salvageable. Just darken some areas. Just make sure you darken some areas and use some brighter tones maybe to pull it out to kind of revive it a bit. Add some. accents here and there so I'm checking the values and I really want to make this side of the house like really darker way darker and that's it just a couple of brush strokes and that's it don't go too crazy with the brush strokes because it's gonna make your painting look overwork. Just in very strategic places, we're gonna tap some darks. Hopefully you guys having fun. <laughs> You're not too frustrated. <laughs> if you're frustrated, it's a good thing. Frustration leads to learning. It's it's making us learn things. And always punch, like do some punches. If it's not quite there, just get mix a very dark tone and like punch it in some strategic area that's how it's gonna revive it like give it a bit of a warmth like I can punch it Maybe here, just give a bit of warmer tone right here. See how just I punched a bit of a red in that into that chimney. I know it's not there, but I'm just popping it with my brush just to give some something that's beyond normal or what we see. Just take it a little bit above and beyond. So here I'm just gonna add a bit of this detail here. Too much water on my brush, so make sure it's all thick, thicker, okay so let's punch here a little bit of dark to show some detail happening and we're not going any into any more details Just suggestions here and there. Okay. 
Okay, so at at some point you you can pop things with white a little bit, dry brush white. Let's get the wither brush. Get the white, open it, and straight from the tube, I would just dip it, dip in it. And you can have a couple of accents with white, like these little flowers. Just have a suggestion, a little grouping. So do a little grouping here, a little grouping there. And that immediately gives the feel, the, su the suggestion of something. And you can even spatter. Ta da! Yeah, it went all over the map. Never mind, <laughs> it's okay. Maybe a little, pop a little white on top of this. Maybe a little here. Don't, don't overdo it. We're gonna be careful with this one. Maybe some of the window. And some of that window, why not? couple of lines on this side. I have this lemon yellow that's very very opaque. It's gonna give us some cool lines. Of course I'm smudging some so it's not so so jarring for the eye. Not too obvious. Cropping some accents and some highlights here and there. Little dots here and there with these more opaque tones. Birds, remember birds? <laughs> you don't have to, but sometimes, yeah, why not hear just a little tap tap of a bird, like little check marks, but more of a. Oh, these are too organized. I just created three in a row. Okay, let me just kill one of those. There is one that's in a different direction. All right, guys, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> Show me what you have. Don't, don't be shy.